The junior out of Orlando, Florida, Oak Ridge High School, coming off a terrific game against Point last week, where he scored 22 points. Mohamedou Jawara wins the opening tip for the Hatters, who are in white liberties in the blue. And A-Sun basketball is back. We are thrilled to have you with us. Hatters attacking the right end here at the Edmonds Center. A gym opened in 1974. Be celebrating its 50th anniversary very soon. So Hatters starting five. This is the usual bunch for Stetson. They get Christian Jones back out of the health and safety protocols. Mohamedou Jawara scores the first bucket, going right around Ben uh, Kyle Road, excuse me. And Jawara with the first two of the game. Meanwhile, for Liberty, they get Kyle McDowell, or Keegan McDowell back, excuse me. He missed out in their last game, a 31-point win over 91 Boyce College. The rest is the usual group, and there is McGee leaping in behind to put it in. He talked about his 48-inch <laughs> vertical. He can get yeah. up there, Darius McGee, with his first two, certainly not his last two on the night. Darius McGee is... Five foot nine, but inch for inch, pound for pound, no doubt one of the best basketball players in the country. And there's Perry with a response, a mid-range jumper for the Orlando native. And the Hatters are in their usual 2-2-1 two, two, full court press just to see how the team handles it. And you know what? If there is a weak spot of this Liberty team, they have a propensity to turn the ball over just a bit. And all of the great things that Darius McGee does, sometimes he leads, you know, he... Turns the ball over like so. Speak it and it shall appear, Greg Turner. <laughs> Hatters have it back. Scoring on their first two possessions. A sharpshooter Chase Johnson circles it around to Stefan Swenson, their point guard. Hatters work it around the perimeter. Perry guarded by the much taller road. Steps back and leaves it short but follows his miss. And it rolls off the cup. And rebounded by McGee. Tough break there for Perry. You did so well to go get the offensive rebound. You know more than anyone in the gym when your shot is off. So he followed it right up, but unable to get it to go. McGee off the glass, no good. Robinson in there to fight for the rebound. It falls to Jawar, and he hangs on to it as McGee tried to swat it out. One of the few advantages the Hatters do have, rebounding the basketball. There's only two teams that rebound worse in the A-Sun than Liberty, and that's Bellarmine and North Florida. Johnston drills it from way out. Chase Johnston, a 39% three-point shooter, has his first of the night, and the Hatters off to a good start here against the Champs. We're looking for two halves of basketball if you're Hatters fans, and, and if you're Liberty Flames, you want to be able to get off to a good start while you're on the road, no doubt. Road loses the handle on it, and Perry picks it up as Road yeah, was certain it would have been a backcourt violation. Yeah. Hatters with a chance to put some real cushion here at the start of the game. Swenson bullies his way inside. And a timeout from Richie McKay as the Hatters are off to a 9-2 start here on their home floor. Just what the doctor ordered. Get off to a good start fast and quick at home. The tournament the last two seasons it's been held. They won a game as a 12 seed in 2019 over Mississippi State. And Richie McKay has built this team around defense, and specifically, Greg, pack line defense, the Tony Bennett philosophy. McKay was the AHC at Virginia for a long time with Tony Bennett. He's brought that to Liberty. They take pride in their defense. And this year, those numbers are down a bit, but you can best bet conference start, they're going to be on top of their basketball game defensively. They do a lot of hedging and strong doubles on screens. They also do a lot of that, shooting threes. Keegan McDowell buries that one. They're seventh in the country in three-pointers made so far this season. They make about ten and a half a game, and McDowell shooting 45% from downtown so far this year, averaging 11 points a game. You know, shooting threes is one thing, but shooting threes efficiently that's something that coaches really like. Christian Jones, the Hatters can't miss right now. They're five of seven from the floor, and all five starters have scored. And Christian Jones throughout his career, 1,000-point score. When he gets off to a good start, he's engaged, and he plays well. They are happy he was able to make it back from health and safety protocol to play this game. McGee lobs it up to Preston. 
Blake Preston into the game off the bench, their biggest player at 6'9", but he misses the roll. And this is where the Flames look a little different. You know, they McGee is handling the basketball a little more, even though they will move him off the basketball uh, and, and not handle it as much because he leads the A-Sun in minutes play. So maybe that has something to do with him turning the ball over just a tad bit at times. Johnston contested three from the corner. Uh, that one's good, too. Can you say hot? <laughs> Stetson, six out of eight from the field, three of four from three, and a 10-point lead on the back-to-back -back reigning league champions. I mean, Coach Donnie Jones couldn't draw it up any better. McDowell, that one's short, and a foul on the rebound. It's going to go against Stetson. Jawara. Gave maybe just a little hip. First foul of the game on either team. It's Preston Canopy and Liberty Flames. Had her six of eight from the field to begin this one. Donnie Jones took over a seven win team a few years ago, made them instantly competitive. They've been about 500 in the league his first two years. He's trying to get that next step with this team. He's got most of his key players back from last year. Is this the season when the Hatters take a step forward in the conference? Well, the one thing Coach has done is he's done it with recruiting and very good talent. Talent acquisition, as we look at Shiloh Robinson working the baseline, which he often does. There's a, that's a guy that's been more active this year for the Flames. But back to Coach Jones, you know, talent acquisition, that's what wins on every level. Like Preston swatting that one away intended for Josh Smith. Now Liberty looking to have some life out of the timeout. An uncharacteristic start for them. Yeah, they've been a, a team that's deliberate offensively. This year has been a little more helter-skelter and loose, if you will. How about Robinson here, though, Greg? Giving them a spark. Count that one and a foul. Shiloh Robinson, not a basketball hotbed where he came from. Kearney, Nebraska. Uh, football country, but that young man is, is, is he's playing more aggressively offensively this year. And, you know, they've had a, lost a lot of players to graduation, so they needed someone to step up in that role. He had his biggest game of last year in the regular season finale. They had to win it to clinch the regular season title. Had a career-high 11 points. He had eight rebounds in that game. And that has sort of served as a springboard for him to assume a bigger role this season. He's been the starting center. And has given Richie McKay... Nine points, four rebounds a night. Yeah, he moves to the power forward slot when Preston comes in the game. But, yeah, he's been that live, active body for them on the defensive end. There's that hard hedge I talked about. Johnston misses for the first time. And the rebound to Robinson. And suddenly Liberty starting to get their mojo back here out of the timeout. McGee, the leading scorer in the league, scores that one. And you see the burst on him. Not only the leading scorer in the A-Sun, he's... Leading the entire country in total points. Third in the nation at 22 points a game. And coming off some big performances over in Hawaii. You know, had 41 points against Stanford and even you know, broke a record. Became the MVP and they didn't even win the tournament. As a matter of fact, they finished in fourth place. They didn't have a championship game, but that tells you something about Darius McGee. And both times McGee has scored, Perry has scored on the very next possession for Stetson, the Hatter's top player. Looking to go step for step with his opposite number two. There's a steal for the Hatters. Johnson, quick trigger off the back iron rebound, Robinson. He can make that shot, but that's almost too quick. You know, you hate to come up with a big defensive play and get nothing out of it. And on the other end, a three for Kyle Road, his first of the game. He's a 42% three-point yeah. shooter. And a compound injury to insult. You know, you, you come up with a big spin and a big steal and possessions are hard to get especially in conference play and especially against this team you want to come away with something good when you come up with a steal Josh Smith top of the key triple that's no good and suddenly out of that timeout the Hatters are ice cold Liberty on a 10-2 run since we've come back makeable shot for Josh Smith but I prefer to see him in a little closer Robinson posting up Rob Perry not much help, and yeah. Robinson ties the game. Yeah, much bigger player than, than Rob Perry. You're talking about 6'7 against 6'4. He took his time, did a saddle dribble. You're going to have to run somebody at him if you have that matchup again. You can't just let him take four or five dribbles into the lane if you're Stetson. Perry step back. That's a two. It's good. Big time shot there. Super Rob Perry. 
Terry averaging 15 points a game at 22 with seven rebounds, six assists last week against Point. Preseason all-conference pick. There's Robinson for three. And Wesa Panzo grabs the rebound for the Hatters. Good team rebounding by the Hatters. Almost out of position there, but they were able to come away with the basketball. Perry now taking it to Robinson, gets fouled. And tit for tat, just like Robinson took him to the basket because he was smaller. He says, I got a bigger guy out on the floor. I'm going to take you to the basket. It'll take us to its own tournament. But Stetson won the game here in the regular season last year. They always play Liberty very, very tough. Flames lost just twice in the A-Sun season last year. Stetson was one of their two defeats. As Rob Perry makes the first of two free throws, he was fouled by Shiloh Robinson before the break. If you look statistically at both of these ball clubs, very little separates them other than the win-loss record. You know, the Hatters have some decided advantages in some categories, like rebounding. And uh, the Hatters this year have more assists than turnovers. So that's a positive sign for the Hatters. And that's something that Liberty does well year in and year out. But the Hatters have improved upon that this year, this season. Hatters keeping Liberty on the perimeter. Now Rode gets inside. Two-man game with Robinson, and he flashes it. And Kyle Rowe actually leads the team in assists. And there's a nice pick and roll and a hard roll to the basket by Mr. Shiloh Robinson. And bang out. And a silly foul from Stefan Swenson. He tapped him on the arm as he was going up for that dunk. And he'll get an extra free throw out of the deal. Robinson has nine points. He went to the bench early, came back in at the under-16 timeout, and has been the catalyst here for Liberty to come back. They were down 10 just five minutes into this game. Just not the best defensive series for the Hatters. And Kyle Rode is not a guy that's going to turn the corner, so you have to play him to pass the basketball. Perry off to a good start with eight points. Steps back behind the line for three. Off the back iron, rebounded by Brody Peebles, true freshman out of Hartsell, Alabama. I'm sure you can tell me exactly where that is. Uh, North Alabama. And he's coming out the number two player in the state. The number one player is at University of Alabama right now. Robinson, offensive foul. Got a little bit too ambitious in there, Shiloh Robinson, and that is his second foul. Whenever you see the chicken wing go out, <laughs> Uh, you see it here. There's the left arm boot. He lowered that shoulder. That is a charge on every level. So we'll see Isaiah Warfield for the first time. The sophomore out of Pennsylvania. As Robinson hits the bench with two fouls. Keegan McDowell is back on. Giancarlo Valdez, backup point guard, is in for Stetson. Wes Panzo, meanwhile, throwing that one away. He and Perry not on the same page. Unforced errors. They seem to loom large and magnify in conference play. The Hatters have jumped out to a good start, and they're up by two under the halfway mark. You don't want any unforced errors like that. McDowell turned down a low post by Josh Smith. Peebles gets a screen, finds the lane wide open. And Peebles is a guy that could score the bucket to score the basketball for you. He has a nice little swag to him. He's about 6'2". two. You know, scored a lot of points in high school, so. Over 3,000 of them, in fact. And now an yes. offensive foul away from the ball on Stetson. I think they're going to get Josh Smith for a moving screen. His first. Yes, yeah, we take a look at it there. Yeah, Josh Smith is stepping out and... You have to be set if you're going to set a screen. And again, the ball, the guy with the basketball has to wait on that screen. The press hasn't bothered Liberty at all. McDowell, quick trigger. That one a little short. Tied at 21, was all Stetson early. Liberty's made their way back. And two you, teams so often play each other if very you're, tight. Yeah, if you're the Hatters, you know, you, you're thinking, you're playing well, but small turnovers are the one that have really 
hurt you so far. There's a foul on Peebles. His first. We'll put 20 seconds back on the clock for the Hatters, and McGee will get a breather as Blake Preston comes in. Just four points so far for Darius McGee. He has been bottled up to a degree, but plenty of time yeah. for him to it, pop it off here. Because he plays about almost 32 minutes a game, so he's going to be in the basketball game to get his points. Seven straight games of 20-plus for McGee. Here's Christian Jones for three. That is way short. Patters started six of eight. They are two for seven since, including 0 for five from three. Last year we saw Drake Dobbs looks as if he was going to be the heir apparent to the point guard, but I think it's going to be Brody Peebles as he made a nice pass there. Well, Drake Dobbs just entered the transfer portal last week, so yes. it's definitely not going to be him. <laughs> and, you know, he's a guy that because of, and there's a, well, yes, I believe it is. A, it's going to be a foul. Yeah, they're going to get Warfield. Warfield. Well, a little flop there, but thought he had drawn the foul, but... We take a look at it. Yep, was not set. Could have easily gone the other way. But as we were mentioning, Dobbs, that's the reason why, because this young man is, I think, is the heir apparent to Darius McGee. And Carlo Valdez driving for Stetson. Liberty in the lead for the first time tonight. Panzo, three. And again, another miss from out there. Six straight missed threes for the Hatters. And we get a chance to take a look at how they hedge on defense. And I will kind of walk our viewers through what's the best way to attack that. You can look forward to that when we come back. Time out. Double team right there. If you're the Hatters or if you're a team playing a team that hedges hard, the best way to attack it is to throw behind that hard hedge. That way you can beat the rotation, and sometimes you can get it right down low to your big guy. Kyle Rode, baseline jumper for the Flames, and they'll extend their lead. Rode with seven points. It's already above his season average. They've got nine from Robinson. Only four from Darius McGee, but they've done enough to take the lead here. Chase Johnston misses a mid-range two. Poked up but not in by Jawara, and rebounded by Preston. The Hatters have gone cold, but credit... Liberty for the defensive prowess and uh, getting them back in the basketball game. But the Hatters have had makeable shots. Liberty, meanwhile, is shooting 69% from the field, 11 to 16. That's behind the back to McDowell, and he drills it from the corner. The Hatters came out in a zone, kind of a matchup zone defense there, and Liberty recognized it right, right away, made a couple of quick passes. You can pass the basketball quicker than you can dribble it through a zone, so that was effective on that last series. Liberty on a 23-6 run over the last eight and a half minutes. They have completely flipped the script from the start of this game. Valdez bullying his way inside. He'll go to the line. One of the playmakers for the Hatters is the sophomore Giancarlo Valdez, third on the team in assists. This time, nothing there. He decided to make something happen on his own. Got bailed out. See if he can go to the line to capitalize. Valdez was the number six prospect out of Alabama, coming out of Decatur Heritage. Was a finalist for State Player of the Year. Just three out of seven from the free throw line this season after that miss. Hatters, in general, are a very poor free throw shooting team under 65 percent has been an achilles heel for them in the past and valdez goes 0 for two not what you want when you're trying to stay in a basketball game early in this first half it started off so well peebles working on johnston he gets by him and there's peebles with the slick ball handling that he has he, he prefers to handle the basketball with his left hand even though he's right-handed The Hatters need a bucket in the worst way here. They're going to take a timeout. Donnie Jones wants to talk it over as Liberty is just 
utterly taken over this basketball game at 20 to make some shots find them down nine points Von Swenson checking back in Hatters have the starters on the floor here with just under six minutes to play in the first half and yeah, let's see if they can get the basketball in the paint as well there he is you got to throw it to him Perry will take it himself and a long two with a hand in his face no good had an opportunity to get Jawara to look right at him and did not make the pass. McDowell steps into a three. It's a little short rebound. Swenson. Hatters get a stop. And McDowell started to feel a little good about himself. <laughs> Why not? He's been making the last few. Hatters again confined to the perimeter. Now they go to Jawara. There you go. Jones open for three. See? That is good. That's what happens when you pass the ball in the post. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a black hole and you won't get it back. Jawara did something that he hasn't done very well throughout his career, which is make a nice pass out of the post. And he went opposite. And Christian Jones knocked it down. That was a great series for the Hatters. A bucket they desperately needed cuts off a 13-0 Liberty run. Now McGee comes up short on his patented move. Now the Hatters out on the break. Liberty will get set. And this half is just flying by. Not many fouls. And the Hatters, as you know, one of the least fouling teams in the NCAA. Yeah, they're in the top 20 in fewest fouls. He'll draw one there. Chase Johnston will go to the line. There's Chase. Got to keep that chin up and put it up on the glass. Soft. Joseph Benzant committing the foul for Liberty, the true freshman from Midland, Texas. Benzant tried to get out of the way. Johnson doesn't go to the free throw line very often. You don't see him drive no. all that often. <laughs> He's four out of seven. And again, it, it, especially it, Chase yeah. Johnston, a guy who he, is a, such a, a good shooter, incredible shooter. Yeah. yeah, not a good free throw shooter so far this year. And I'll be in a very small sample, but and all the same. Unlike when he's shooting threes, the free throw, you don't have to shoot it as quick. <laughs> he just got to put that one up. Let's see if he takes a little more time here. And he did knock that one down. Seven for Johnson. Hatters within five. Here's that two, two, one. And they've kind of went back into man to man, and Liberty breaks it with no problem. Yeah, straight man here for the Hatters. Peebles poked away oh, by Johnston. Good steal. On this college level, you just can't play with the ball in front of someone. Johnston, quick trigger three. Yes. It's good. Chase Johnston with another triple, his third of the first half, and the Hatters are right back in it. And Chase Johnson said, welcome to the A-Sun, young man. I'm going to pick your pocket, and I'm going to come down and knock down a three. Hatters on a 7-0 run. Preston operating from the top. Ball knocked away. Vincent Great stolen. Great defense. The Hatters played that textbook. Didn't give up any cuts. Perry in trouble from that hedge. Now Jones will drive. Jones puts it up off the glass. No good. Poked out to Darius McGee. And again, when a team hedges hard, you got to go backwards. You know, he had Jawara wide open. There's McGee. Been a while since we'd heard from him. And he's just so quick. Everybody's consensus, a son preseason pick for play of the year. And you knew he could shoot the three. He made the fourth most three-pointers in Division One last year, but he's become such a better all-around scorer as a senior. He was player of the year in the conference, scoring 15 points a game. What about at 22? <laughs> you know, he's always been X-Factor in my mind when you talk about the Flames. Even with that loaded team that they have, as we're going to get Jawara, got fouled here as he was pursuing the pumpkin part of your game than getting in foul trouble so they're going to definitely sit him out maybe probably the rest of the half because you don't want him to get three this is a one and one for Jawara who's only a 53 percent shooter from the line and he misses Hatters have left four points on the free throw line tonight they are 
three out of seven. Lob to Preston, and he loses the handle as he went up for the dunk. It did become open for him, but then the yeah. ball popped out of his hand. Just came right out of his hand. Wanted to go up quicker than he had possession of it. Lucky for the Hatters, but they stayed with it and got it back. And how about Road under pressure at the end of the shot clock? A butterfly falling in for two. Six-point lead for the Flames. Stefan Swenson, the Hatters' top playmaker, throws it away as it was right between two of his teammates, Rob Perry and Christian Jones. But Swenson, you would look off a wide-open Jawara with a guy on his back to throw it cross-court 25 feet. I just don't understand that play. I mean, he looked right at Jawara. I mean, you may get the basketball back. You could move without the basketball. And he's proven tonight that he will throw the ball out of the post. So that's a tough one to swallow there. And that's, I'm, I'm speaking like a big guy because, you know, I, 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 <laughs> power forward, you know, you, you, you're playing that position and you do a lot to post up. And when you don't get the basketball, it's disheartening. McDowell fouled on the three, yes, though. He they didn't give him the call. Yeah, they're That fishing. looked clear as crystal from here. Yes. But he doesn't get the call. Johnston misses the triple on the other end. And Smith fighting for the rebound, but Vinzant has got it. The Hatters have managed to stay in this basketball game because of how they... McGee so low to the ground, lays it off for Vinzant, out to an open three, McDowell. That one Great good. ball movement. They had the Hatters in a disarray defensively, in a scramble, so to speak, and Vanzant could have easily put that ball up, but he passed it right outside to an open teammate. And very balanced from those big wings for Liberty. McDowell, Rode, Robinson, all of them with nine points each. All more than McGee, their leading scorer. Perry passes up the three. Jones will get a try at it now. Langs off the front iron, but back out to Jones. Takes a mid-range two. He could have held it. Yeah, and instead, for the last Liberty, shot. Yeah, Liberty will get one more chance to score here before the break. This is tied for their largest lead of the game. McGee accelerates. Time running down. McDowell's got to get this up. He does. It's no good. Fortunate for the Hatters. They're not down double digits here. Liberty, though, closes the half on a 32-30 two-time defending ASUN tournament champions. Lost just two games in the conference all of last season out of 16 regular season and tournament. One of those was right here in this gym against Stetson. Off to a good start here, though. Joseph Benzant from Kyle Road. His first two of the game, and Liberty, just like that, has increased their lead to double digits for the first time tonight. Set play out of halftime, and that's something you don't want to happen. And if you're the Hatters, trying to climb back into this basketball game. Swenson. Hatter playmaker takes it inside himself. Jawara a little early with the tip in. And the Hatters come up empty on their first possession. Feels like a big few minutes here at the start to see if the Hatters can prevent this from getting out of hand. Robinson nearly had the offensive rebound, but he tips it out as McGee missed the three. McGee in that first half, only six points, but that was enough to get him to number 16 on Liberty's all-time scoring list. 1,386 points. He passed John Caleb Sanders. Already Liberty's all-time three-point score, so. Jawara in trouble. He did get the shot up, but it's in and out. Well defended there by Robinson. Now McGee kicks to Venzant, who's fouled at the rim. And Swenson, was, sorry, yeah. uh, Greg, just oh. got a little bit too much contact there from Stefan Swenson, his second foul. Yeah, this was because of the penetration by you-know-who, Mr. Darius McGee. And made the pass to a cutting to the basket, Van Zandt. Had us losing track of their 
the person that you're guarding, you know, everyone watches the basketball, but you have to be able to see the basketball where you are and the man that you're guarding. Ben Zant goes one out of two. He is the team's leading free throw shooter at 86%. A little bit of a surprise that he missed one. But he's got Liberty up by 12. Good looking freshman from Midland, Texas. 6'3, one of the number one, what, number 51 in the country of talking about big guards coming out of high school. Johnston fighting his way inside was unfortunate to miss that one. He got a good look. Got to make those shots. How many times have we seen Swenson and, and Chase get to the bucket but just unable to get it to go? Greg Stetson is four of their last 20 after that hot start to the game. And McDowell puts that one in. Liberty, meanwhile, shooting well over 60% for the game. McDowell yeah. with 11, and the Flames are starting to run away with it. Yeah, and a good time out here. Again, Stetson losing track of their person that you're guarding when you watch the basketball you don't know who's looking at the basketball there's Keegan McDowell cutting right to the basket slipping and getting an easy point that's why Liberty Flames are shooting 62 percent and that's why they've scored 26 points in the paint this basketball game they are well on top here on a 10-0 run going back to the first half Stetson needs buckets quickly. Rob Perry get two free throws out of that. Foul is against Robinson. That's his third. The number three on Shiloh Robinson. And you want a basket, who do you go to? You go to Mr. Super Rob Perry. And he's driving to the basket and just ever so lightly touched on the arm. But that's all it takes. Shiloh Robinson. Let's see if he can cash it in. Having his best year yet from the free throw line. Comes in at 84%, and he makes the first. Three out of three tonight. The rest of the team, besides Perry, is one for five tonight from the line. Peebles will check in for the first time this half for Robinson. Well, Josh Smith has come on for Stetson in exchange for Christian Jones. The question when I look at both of these basketball clubs is, okay, you have Darius McGee. For the Flames, okay, you have Super Raw Perry for the Hatters. Okay, who else is going to step up and score baskets for you? And it looks like the Flames have answered that question. Emphatically, here's one of those guys, Kyle Rode, with nine points tonight. But sometimes it's Chase Johnston, sometimes it's Christian Jones. Peebles, high off the glass, no good. Perry in front of Vincent for the rebound. Good defensive series for the Hatters there. Perry puts it on the deck against Peebles. Gets inside. Will it count? Yes, it will. Wow, continuation. <laughs> and um, Mr. Super Rob Perry just taking the game into his own hands. And he had a smaller Peebles on him. And you take your pick. Is it Peebles or is it Keegan McDowell? They got McDowell for the foul, his first. And Perry completes the three-point play. 13 points for Rob Perry. He's got the Hatters back within single digits. And Chase Johnson scoring early on for the Hatters. That's kind of the Robin to the Batman of, of Rob Perry. But you need that third score. Sometimes it's Christian Jones. Peebles corner three. Good. Yeah. And again, that young man put up 3,000 points in high school. So he knows a thing or two about knocking down some shots from outside shooting 37 percent from three as a college player now josh smith nice nice pass by jawara and this may be his career high with assists <laughs> in a basketball game he has two yeah smith's first points those are the first bench points for stetson tonight josh smith's actually the hatter's leading rebounder at this point at three in and out for mcdowell and mcgee you know he's going to put it up from anywhere at any moment Ooh, super raw Perry. Oh, oh. Out of the hands of Jawara. It was a great move by Perry, and I'm yes. not sure Jawara thought it was coming to him. No, I mean, the, the nice crossover behind the back, and, and Jawara, you got to be ready. And you talked off camera about his teammates maybe 
not having the best of confidence in a guy in the post, but you know, he's still your best post player. And he has to touch the basketball. McGee comes down with that. It was well in front of him. Oh, you got to get on him. Well, yeah. that's what happens if you don't. Yep. Yeah, and Jawaro. First three of the game for Darius McGee, who was fourth in the country in three-pointers last year. He leads the country in three-pointers made this season. His 62nd made three of the year in 16 games. And that may turn on a switch for him. <laughs> There's that hard hedge out. Yep, and if you throw back behind it, you had Josh Smith open. Johnston lost the handle. Liberty wants a timeout. They did not have to take that. The shot clock didn't change, but they grant the timeout to Kyle Rode. It will be Flames ball. Lock right here at the Edmund Center and carried exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. Liberty up 13 on Stetson here as we're making headway into the second half of our A-Sun Conference opener. Evan West and Greg Turner here in the land with you. Glad to have you on a Tuesday night. Pivotal point in the game for the Hatters. Road misses a three. Jawara can't haul in the rebound, and Liberty gets a free possession. And that'll be it for Jawara as he gets hooked for Christian Jones. It looks as if Jawara had possession of the rebound or trying to grab control and then Swenson comes in to try to help out, but I don't know if he needed that help. Road in the high post. Backing down Josh Smith. Road turns to his right, misses the lane. Road was looking for a flame to cut. You know, he's the number one assist guy for the for the flame, so. Did not get a cutter, had to make a move. Good defense of Josh Smith. Stefan Swenson catch and shoot three, and it's usually reversed with those two. Swenson passing to Johnston, and that's right. the result when the roles were switched. Hatter scored 15 points in the first five minutes. They've scored 20 points in the 21 minutes since. Not a lot of points, uh, both of these teams, in terms of scoring per game. And Flames score 72, and, and the Hatters at right at 70. Another offensive rebound for Liberty. Foul on the Hatters. They'll get Johnston for his second personal. Those second chance opportunities. Not many offensive rebounds, but you take a look at it here. The long miss. You know that Karam is going to come off long, so... You have to make contact, box out, and look for those long rebounds off of missed three-pointers. Hatters need a spark from someone. Rode too hard on that pass to Benzant, and it's stolen away by Stetson. Good hustle by Swenson. Terry driving offensive foul. Tough call, tough call. Didn't quite get that left shoulder in front. You make the call. Yeah, warded off with that arm. The officials, all three of them, <laughs> that's what they saw. It looks as if Peebles was still moving, but that's something that officials have looked at on every level. Even though a guy is moving, you still can draw a charge if someone wards off. Road hits the three. Ties his season high with 12 points, and Liberty has their largest lead of the night. And we talked about it. If McGee is not scoring the basketball, where are your points coming from? They are answering that tonight. Jones. Missed the triple, and it's one and done again for the Hatters. They just have three offensive rebounds tonight. Josh Smith made a great pass out of the post. Christian Jones just unable to knock it down. And there's so many things. Uh, what a feed by McGee. Vincent yeah. doesn't score, but he will go to the line. Hit on the arm. Just the quickness. That's the second on Christian Jones. Cat quickness of Darius McGee getting inside, beating Weza Panzo on the dribble, 
and the nice dump off to Van Zant, who got fouled. He said Jones bumped him as he was cutting across the baseline. Van Zant misses or makes, excuse me, the first free throw. He was a big score. We talked about Peebles over 3,000. Van Zant had about 2,700 yeah. at Midland Christian High School. Was an All-State player in Texas. 21 points a game as a senior. And they really like him because he he just doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And when you can catch on defensively for this Liberty Flames team, you're going to be able to play for them. You know, you're going to be inserted into the lineup. But Coach McKay, if you can catch on to his defensive principles, you're going to play. If you've watched a lot of Virginia, you'll get the idea of the way this team defends. Swenson splits the hedge, but misses underneath the basket. Nice drive to the basket. Maybe should have just gone straight up. He kind of tried to avoid getting it blocked. Perhaps may have gotten a foul. Great pass by Rode, and it's put in high off the glass by Peebles. The Hatters again just getting back backdoored. Johnny Jones wants to talk about it. Kyle Rode having himself a night. 12.6 assists. Starting to get away from the Stetson Hatters here. Liberty out to a 20-point lead, extending that from nine at halftime. They're on a 10-0 run. Hatters are scoreless in the last four and a half minutes. Wesa Panzo dribbling into the painted area, trying to kickstart this Hatter team, which has gone cold really since their hot first five minutes. He's not generated all that much. There's a blocking foul, though, on Peebles. That's his second personal. Third team foul on the Flames. And we'll get the Hatters a fresh 20 seconds, trailing 55-35 with 11.46 to play. Well, this is the, the, the time in the game that you're going to have to make a move if you're the Hatter. Quick three for Johnston off the inbound. No good, but an offensive rebound for Jones. He draws the personal foul. Isaiah Warfield reaching in on the arm. Second foul on Warfield. Not a shooting foul. Johnston gets the inbound again. Hands off to Valdez this time. Obviously, if they had a score, you're going to go right into your press, and there's an opportunity for a three-point play the hard way. Christian Jones. Jones trying to spark his team, the redshirt senior out of Columbia, South Carolina, in a grad program here at Stetson University. Making a concerted effort to take the ball to the basket, dribbling to the left side, and just outmatched Warfield. Little could he do, and stronger. Christian Jones to see if he can be able to knock down his free throw so you can set up your press. The press has not bothered the Flames all game. Jones finishes the three-point play. 55-38. Liberty leads Stetson 11-35 to go. Having some technical issues with our scoreboard graphic at the moment, so I'll keep you abreast on the score and time developments. Darius McGee here, lobbing it up, and Preston throws it down for Liberty. Yeah, the Hatters came out in a zone defense. It looked as if, like a 1-3-1, one, one. it uh, had the appearance of that, but right away, McGee read what it was about and delivered a nice alley-oop over the top of it. Chase Johnston started this one hot, but he has gone cold since. 11 minutes to go, Liberty up 57-38. McGee, just nine points for him so far tonight, but he certainly impacted the game in other ways. Yeah. It's been the bigs. Now it's Robinson into double figures with 11. Yeah, that defense will not work against a good passing team like this. So Coach Jones, he hates to probably go man-to-man -man straight up, but that's going to be your best bet. And this is a tough lineup for the Hatters. They don't have a center in the game right now. And Liberty's three tallest players, I think, are bigger than anybody on the floor for the Hatters at the moment. Here goes Jones inside, and Preston scoops the rebound off of Jones's head. He's got Smith and Jawara at the scorer's table. You see him right there to check back in, but 
He needs a stoppage first. Preston trying to post up. It's Panzo to knock it out of bounds, and that'll get the two bigs back in the game for the Hatters. 59-38 Liberty with 10-08 to play. Yep, so the Hatters got out of that zone defense. They, they tried to run maybe a little trap out of it, but uh, they're back to their man-to-man. -man McGee will slow things down with Liberty up by 21. McGee just pops the three and drains it. And he gets up high on that jumper as well. So he knocked one down a few minutes ago, and we said that may spark him, and I believe it did. Friday on ESPN. Halftime here in Deland. Liberty with a nine point lead, 37 28 over Stetson. Evan West and Greg Turner here courtside. And Greg, for once, it's not the Darius McGee show for the Flames. They've gotten nine points each out of their front court. Keegan McDowell, Kyle Rode, and Shiloh Robinson. And those guys have helped Liberty overcome a slow start to take control of this game. McDowell has shot the ball well. He's the only other Flame that averages in double figures. And if you're the Hatters, it looks as if they were playing the way that the Flames want to play. They attempted more threes. And then you look at the Flames, they scored 22 points in the paint in addition to shooting the ball extremely well. But the Hatters, they have to think about going inside out, I think. And, and then they have to take their opportunities to rebound the basketball. They're a bigger team. They rebound the basketball better. The Flames are not such a good rebounding team. So the Hatters just left a lot of points on the free throw line and some short jumpers they could be up in this basketball game as they were early yeah they were up 10 after five minutes only to see that lead very quickly evaporate we, we, you know we talked about sets on offense trying to get the ball inside more how can they slow liberty down shooting the ball so well in this first half well it's been their movement of the basketball the flames have done a good job of just not settling you know everyone that seems to be touching the basketball so the hatters are gonna have to tighten up defensively and uh, they're gonna have to limit those opportunities they've had some offensive rebounds that the flames have uh, managed to get second chance opportunities with they have to limit those opportunities and they're gonna come away with the victory here 37 28 Liberty on top the defending league champions looking to start 2022 with a win we got plenty more here at halftime stay with us doing it wrong man what's wrong with action figures nothing except buying them without capital one shopping what's that samuel mr l jackson capital one shopping instantly searches for available coupon codes and automatically applies them just download it to your computer whoa you're my hero yeah i can tell you like it i look good in miniature He doesn't sneak in to use that 48-inch vertical like he used to over these last three years. And 
you know, come away with rebounds. They say, though, for guards, rebounding is about effort, right? It is. It is. There's McGee off the mark with one of those trademark step back threes. Now Johnston. And that's yes. got to feel good for him to finally see one go down. And good look ahead by Rob Perry. Seeing the floor, seeing an open Johns Chase Johnson run into a spot. Peebles leaves it underneath, and Robinson sets a new career high with 16 points. Shiloh Robinson, the junior from Kearney, Nebraska. Also noted as an exceptional student, he graduated high school with a perfect 4.0 grade point average. That's the 16th assist by the Flames, who have shared the basketball extremely well. Josh Smith hits a three. Josh been looking for that three-pointer for quite a while. He's a very capable shooter out there. But yeah, the numbers haven't been there for him this season from three. As he's tacked on a little bit more volume, he's shooting 28%, but yeah. he can definitely do it. We Is saw it in a limited way last year. It's Chase all Johnson. About <laughs>
Thank you.